Hi, this is Lisa Kelly, Notre Dame author and class of 1993, and you are watching the Two Irish Brothers Show. Cheers and go Irish. Tyree, here's Tyree with the lane. Tyree, whoa! Can he get there? Tyree at the 30, 20, 10, touchdown Notre Dame! Woo! 98 big ones. How's it going, everyone? I am ND Sean, 45. I'm Irish Benjamin, 57. And together, the two of us make up this little ordeal known as the two. Irish Brothers Show. You guys know the deal. You saw it in the intro. Hit that subscribe tab in the bottom right-hand corner. Hit the like or the dislike tabs. Helps with the algorithm. And, of course, uh, make sure you guys check out in the description box below the two travel packages that we have been promoting for our good friend, former Notre, Notre Dame tight end Irv Smith, and our new friend, uh, Mr. Vince Rizzuto out of Philadelphia, for his trip that he's putting on this year. Check that out. You guys might be might just be interested in both of them. Also, a um, couple of announcements that we would like to make. Um, first off, uh, you guys already know about this. But you help us get to 500 subscribers, Ben and I will start doing a little giveaway contest. Um, and also, we now have a new set schedule for um, for every week. Now, obviously, you guys know we have the recap of the previous game on Sunday. And then we're do about to do the preview for this week's game against North Carolina now. Um, we're recording it on Sunday, but it's going to be it's posted here on Wednesday. And Ben has his own segment on Tuesdays, which uh, is him picking the top 25. And with that, Ben, I still think you should call yourself something. I'm, I've been debating on what to call myself. I mean, what do you guys think? The great Benzino or the great Benzini? Those are, those are two that I like. You should call yourself something, Ben. But, uh, but anyway, as far as the rest of the weekly schedule goes, it worked so well last week. It went very well. Um, I will be doing a live stream every Thursday night, probably six or seven o'clock. Um, but you guys will see the if you are subscribed to us, you will see it um, pop up on your on your YouTube feed of upcoming stuff. And that stream will be for subscribers only. So yep. uh, we're gonna we're gonna be start we're gonna start doing that right now. And maybe on Monday or Friday, whatever, there might be another little surprise in there. So you never know, but that's our set schedule for now. Um, so yeah, Ben, what do you think? I like it. I like it a lot. I mean, I should know what you think already. Cause we talked about it before doing the video, <laughs> but, uh, no, we have to mix things up. People, you all know that Ben and I have different work schedules. And, uh, so anyway, we got a set schedule for you guys. So you know when to see us. And, uh, so with that said, um, let's get right into this next game. So the Irish are coming off a nice win over Cal. We, we Marcus Freeman and, and company, he got they really got the uh, the that boulder off their shoulder. You know what I mean? Getting uh, finally get, breaking through, getting that first win. A lot of things that were on the line in that Cal game, especially with quarterback Drew Pine. But like we said in the in the recap, the Irish have something to work with now when it comes to a quarterback. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, he's got his feet wet. He's got his first. Start under his belt. It was a success. A success. You know, you won the game. You found a way to win. You righted the ship. So now it's the next step or the next hurdle. And this hurdle this week is traveling to Chapel Hill and taking on North Carolina. Undefeated North Carolina. And I think a lot of people thought that our records would be a little bit similar. Didn't work out that way. But everybody knew what we were getting in North Carolina. They've pretty much done what most people think they were going to do with maybe a few close calls, talking about Appalachian State. But we can't overlook North Carolina. They're a very dangerous football team. Um, and, you know, that defense may be porous, but the offense sure can hum. Yeah, let's take a look at some of those offensive stats right now. So <laughs> their quarterback, Drake May, through three games, he's already almost passed for a thousand yards. He's sitting at the 930 mark, but uh, looking at his numbers here, 70, 72 of 97 for 930 yards, um, 11 touchdowns, one pick. Yeah. Uh, that's a pretty, uh, that's, oh, a, that's pretty, pretty. He's a freshman. Yes, 
that's uh, that's another crazy a uh, crazy thing too is that this is a freshman that is caught on so well to the college game and this is three games into his his uh collegiate career now le- leading on the ground is uh omarion hampton with 38 carries for 228 yards and five touchdowns and right behind him is quarterback drake may with 146 yards and one touchdown and then uh you got guys like Caleb Hood, who's uh, ran for 10, 10 times, 98 yards, uh, uh, George Petaway, 15 for 87 yards, and so on down the list. But here's the intriguing part about their offense that our defense this week is really going to need to look out for is Drake May, looking at the numbers here, he loves to spread the ball out. I mean, oh, yes. he, I mean, leading the way is uh, Kobe Pesor, 14 receptions, 172 yards with two touchdowns, but Looking just down the road after him, guys like uh, Kamari Morales, Bry- uh, Bryson Nesbitt, Gavin Blackwell. Uh, you know, you got, I mean, you got two tight ends that are in the top three here, but yeah. all the and way six, down. Six guys that have at least 100 yards receiving in the touch. Yes. So this is a Drake, this is a quarterback in Drake May that, like you said, loves to spread the ball around. Well, you got, you got seven guys that have at least one touchdown. So that yeah. should tell you all you need to know. So they have a very they have a very potent offense, and they know what they know what they're doing. They can spread the ball out, they can run it. Um, but Ben, you said the defense is a little bit of a different story, so I'll let you handle that because you seem to defense know it pretty well. A little bit of a different story for sure. Their rushing defense, 111th in the country. Their passing defense is 112th in the country, and their total defense overall is 123rd in the country out of, I think, 141 teams now, I want to say. So it's a little rough. You know, they they average 51 points a game, but they give up 37 points a game. And, of course, a big part of that average was their their two-point win over Appalachian State, 63-61, to which, you know, I look look at that, and I think that's a basketball game. (laughs) Yeah. You know? So, yeah, no, this, this, this Notre Dame team, is going to have to really focus the pass or the passing, the offense against this this North Carolina defense because they'll give up points. But and the thing is, they've done it. And the thing is, they've done it against. Uh, I got to point this out because I think it is relevant. But their defense has done this against Florida A and M, Appalachian State, and Georgia State. I'm not trying to knock teams or anything, but these aren't exactly teams that are at the top of the. You know, they're not exactly the cream of the crop. Yeah, which Appal- which Appalachian State, I will say, is a, a pretty nice feel-good story this year. Yeah, Appalachian State's, I think, shocked some people this season. But, yeah, no, when you're giving up that kind of stuff to, to opponents like that, that's pretty that's pretty nuts. I mean, and, you know, people can say, oh, well, you guys lost Marshall. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll give you that. But, I mean, and then Marshall a point total to, 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 like, Florida A&M and stuff is pretty, pretty crazy. But, and, then Mar- and then Marshall turns around and loses to Bowling Green. So yeah. all the th- all, all the thundering herd fans are giving us crap. Okay, you you loot you beat us, but you turn around and lose to Bowling Green. But I digress. Well, that's in the past. You know, we're not focusing yeah. on Marshall this week. This week the hurdle is North Carolina and getting the victory out in Chapel Hill. And uh it's Just been that- a minute since North Carolina's beat Notre Dame. Let's I mean, you know, we've had some good matchups, and this this is a matchup, people that is near and dear to Sean and I's hearts because I got married on game day when Notre Dame played North Carolina. That's a fun fact for you. Yes, so, and, that, and that was the day we met in person was, it was I Ben's want, wedding. I want to win this game. I North Carolina is always circle on the schedule for me. I want to beat North Carolina. We can beat North Carolina. People are saying we don't stand a chance against North Carolina. We can beat them. They are vulnerable. That offense is great, but if our defense can can start limiting that offense, I think we have a really really good shot at coming away with this victory. Well, and also I think too if uh, if we can get the offense going with Drew Pine and we can figure out a system that works for him that transitions to the rest of the offense, like we saw in the second half of the game against Cal last week. Because let's just face it, the first half of that game wasn't too great, aside from the one touchdown drive that we had. Um, but the second the second half was great as far as execution goes on offense. If Tommy Reese can figure that out and get this get get it through Drew Pine's mind with a do your effing job, 
which I don't, I could care less about that. I'm glad I was glad to I love, like said, it. I love it. Yes. I was glad to see that fire out of Tommy Reese as a coach. I really was. But if he, I, and I want him to prove me wrong. I want to be proven wrong. I want to see him yeah. succeed. Uh, so if, if they can find a way between offensive coordinator and quarterback, which transitions to the rest of that offense and play like we saw in the second half against Cal last week, then there's nowhere but up to go. And I, and I like this, the, our chances of this offense rebounding and leading on to us uh, having a great rest of the season. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is you know, I mean, unfortunately, three weeks in, you never want to be in a position where every game becomes a must win. But in college football, I think pretty much every game is a must win. You start losing games, your chances of getting the playoffs and getting to a new NY6 game – they they start dwindling real quick, so this is a must win for Notre Dame. And, and we, know, we know our playoff chances are done. We know that. I hate you saying come it, but it's Notre true. Dame for this reason. This this type of game, this type of atmosphere is why you come and play at Notre Dame. Hands down, totally one hundred and ten percent. This is a hostile environment. Everybody is saying that that North Carolina is this. You prove them wrong. You march in there. You punch North Carolina in the mouth, and you come away with the victory. That's what needs to happen. Well, and I think also with with as as potent of an of an offense that North Carolina has, I think the one of the biggest strategies is just like I said in in the the Ohio State preview, ball control. If yeah. you're able to hold on to the ball and get these nice little drives of you know four four or five yards every play, and keep that time keep their offense off the field. Yeah, games in your hands, but yeah. of course, I mean, it's, we do know we do know at times that Notre Dame is we're one of those teams that that do like to get up there quick, and keep the defense yeah. off their heels, which that's a factor too. But I just think if you can go on these nice little, you know, six seven minute drives, that's really going to help us. Yeah, well, and it makes it so their offense isn't on the field. So there's that, but it also helps our defense rest. This is a game where our defense has to rest because this North Carolina offense is like Ohio State's offense. Very high, high, high octane, lots of passing, relies on the big plays, you know, all that kind of stuff. So the more that we're on the field, the better off we are. And this has to be a fast start. We can't see a slow start in this game. You know, we saw the slow start in Ohio State. We saw the slow start in Marshall. We saw a slow start in Cal. This needs to not be we feel our opponent out. This is we come out First drive, march down the field, score touchdown, not a field goal, score touchdown, get this game in our favor. That's what needs to happen. This crowd is going to be into it. It's Notre Dame. You know that North Carolina wants to beat Notre Dame. They haven't beaten Notre Dame in a quick minute. Mac Brown actually has never beaten Notre Dame at North Carolina. Thank you very much. We got to do this. This is something that has to happen, and this is the next step. The next step is, can you start a game fast? Because we haven't seen it. Yes, and, I, and to answer your question, I think the I could be wrong in this, but I think the last time that North Carolina beat us was 2008. So we're going back to when, to when Jimmy Clausen, Michael Floyd, and Golden Tate were there. But if they've beaten us, if they've beaten us uh, since then, I I don't know without looking it up. But that's the last time that Notre Dame versus North Carolina. Yeah, and you know what? It's everybody wants to beat us. I don't care if we're we're two and ten or twelve and zero or three and five or whatever. Whatever our our win total is, people want to beat us. Period. Because it's Notre Dame. Because the, it's us against the world. It, it, that's a, that's actually a perfect idea for. A shirt, thank you very much. Notre Dame versus the world, but it is Notre Dame versus the world, and we have to start fast. I'm sorry, I mean, maybe I sound like a broken record, but we have to start fast. And this game, we need to get some turnovers, okay? Turnovers, please. Let, let's get some turnovers, switch the momentum, make the field a little bit shorter. You know, if we do that, we're on our way. And, well, and I'm sorry, people can call me crazy, but this is the best team North Carolina is going to see up to this point, is Notre Dame. Top to bottom talent, this is the best team North Carolina is going to see. So it's time to see what they're made of. 
And the one thing that sucks in this game that has to be pointed out is J- J.D. Bertrand, linebacker, he will not be in there for the first half due to the targeting call within the last minute of the Cal game. So yeah. hopefully that hopefully that doesn't hurt us too much. Cuz he cuz he is a very ta- a very talented linebacker. He's made some plays this year so far to this point and that's going to suck not to have him, but hopefully hopefully there's someone that can step up in, you know, the next man in scenario. Yeah. But um but yeah, I mean um oh, what was I going to say? I hate it when I lose my train of thought here. Um we also have to have to uh, continue to, to utilize guys like Chris Tyree and Audric Estime. I mean, like we said in the recap uh, f- uh, for the Cal game, look what happened when you utilize those guys. They yeah. they stepped up, they performed, they did what they had to do. We found the end zone, and and with Drew Pine, you know, yeah, you you, you want to see some improvement. You want to see him go downfield more, of course. But if the short five to ten yard passes is what helps you find the end zone, then I'm all for that. Yeah, for sure. I'm- for I'm sure. fine. I'm fine if that's what works. Yeah, it, you do what you have to win a game. That, that that's all all that matters. You know, too many people focus on, you know, oh, you have to do this or we have to do that or whatever. Okay, currently Notre Dame football is not in a situation to be saying, okay, we need to score sixty eight points or we need to to rush for two hundred yards or we need to pass for three. We're not in any place right now to be saying that. Okay, at this point in time, it is. Find a way to win the game, okay? And if it takes 45 run plays and 10 passing plays, so be it. If it takes 50 passing plays and three run plays, so be it. Just make it work. I got that statistic before I continue my rant. Notre Dame is 20-1 and against North Carolina in football. The last actual win. um, It was 2008 then. Was 2008. Um. And that was a vacated North Carolina game, so there's that. So really, the last win was 1960 for North Carolina. So, and Mac Brown hasn't beaten North or Notre Dame in his career at North Carolina. So there you go. So yeah, they want to. They want to beat us. I'm sorry. They want to. Everybody does. Got to find a way to win, man. You know. And it's we selling broken records every week. Make big plays. Limit the dumb mistakes and the turnovers. There was yeah. a lot. There was a lot of false starts in this game against Cal. This past game against Cal, I saw it. I'm like, you should know the cadence. You're at home. Thank you. You're at home. There should be no reason you don't know what's going on and and all that. Limit those mistakes and get turnovers. Get the ball. I saw them trying to. I saw them ripping at the ball. I saw them trying to make these plays. Let's get it. Let's get it. Yes. Let's get a win. Let's act like a, be a bunch of ball hawks out there and get it. You know, take it away, make take it away, make them pay. Yep, <laughs> like it. Take it away, make them pay. Like it. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, the mental mistakes. I mean, they they kill you. Those offsides, they kill you. So do the uh, yep. the late hits and my goodness, the uh, the targeting that we got that kept North or that kept Cal alive in last week's game. I damn near had a heart attack because yeah. they they almost came down with that hail mary. Oh yes, they did. And oh, I don't want to. I don't want to see any more of that. No, <laughs> I can't. No, I can't no, no, no. I can't take it. So we've covered all the basics, and now it's time for the best, probably the best part of every prediction: score predictions or previews. I mean, every, the pro- best part of every preview: score prediction. So yes. Ben, I started off last week. You take the honors this week. All right. You ready for this? Yeah. Notre Dame, 36. North Carolina, 21. Notre Dame wins this game. We're kind of close. We're kind of close. I'm basing mine on how North Carolina's defense have played, which I know I know you can't really base off opponents now. I mean, Marshall proved that because they only played Norfolk State before us and, well, they came in and beat us, obviously. So it almost doesn't matter, but it still kind of does. So based on what Marshall's defense has done, or Marshall's, what North Carolina's defense has done through three games, and based on how we're still kind of breaking in a first-time starting quarterback and he's still uh, getting his feet wet, 
we finally broke through on the offense in the second half last week. So that so that I, that's what all I'm going off of. So based on that, I'm going to say Notre Dame 30, North Carolina 20. I like it. We're we're scoring. We're starting. We saw that they can score some points. Notre Dame's offense. I'm talking about here. We saw that they can score some points. We saw that they can still hold teams to the teens. <laughs> so that's that's where I come to my score prediction. Notre Dame 30, North Carolina 20. So I it's I think there still might be a little a little bit of a, a heart attack type stuff in there. Oh yeah. I, I see us winning this game, and the the main thing with winning this game is it gets you back to five hundred. So yes. you're just, you're just about, you know, almost at not. I don't know if clean slate would be the right word, but you're kind of at a reset point. Yeah. So you get you get to you get to five hundred. You can. You can you can plan around that. You can you can uh, go off of that. Yep, I agree. So, so on that note, everyone. Um, not much left for us to cover here, to, except uh, like we said at the start of the video, be on the lookout for our new schedule, uh, the new stuff that we have coming out. Ben's, uh, the great Benzini's uh, top 25 uh, prediction show on, or video on Tuesday. Um, me going live uh, Thursday nights at around six or seven o'clock. And this is central time I'm talking here. And if Ben's able to join while he's at work for a few minutes, awesome. Because it's, it's the stream isn't just about me. It's about both of us. And uh, we can just come talk some Notre Dame football. And then, uh, yeah, so any other surprises? I, I might have a couple this week. Who knows? So, yeah, on that note, I am Mendy Sean 45. I'm Irish Benjamin 57. And as we always say, good night, God bless, and go Irish. Go Irish. Stomp the Tar Heels. <laughs>